Hey there, celebrities who died today. It's time to gather once again and pay tribute to the unforgettable souls who have recently left us. From captivating figures in entertainment to groundbreaking leaders in various fields, their legacies continue to shine bright. But before we dive into their remarkable journeys, take a moment to show your love by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us keep spreading positivity and inspiration. Number 1. Andy Russell American Football Player Andy Russell was a legendary linebacker who helped the Pittsburgh Steelers become champions in the 1970s. Russell was born on October 29, 1941, in Detroit, Michigan. He moved to St. Louis, Missouri as a teenager and became a star football player at Ladue High School. He then attended the University of Missouri where he played both running back and linebacker and earned a degree in economics. He was drafted by the Steelers in the 16th round of the 1963 NFL Draft, but he had to serve in the Army for two years before he could join the team. Russell became a starter and a leader for the Steelers, who were struggling to win games in the 1960s. He was one of the few players who remained on the team when Chuck Knoll became the head coach in 1969. Noel recognized Russell's talent and intelligence and made him the team captain and the leader of the defense. Russell was part of the famous Steel Curtain defense that dominated the NFL in the 1970s. He won two Super Bowls with the Steelers in 1974 and 1975. He also made seven Pro Bowl appearances and was voted the team's MVP in 1971. He retired after the 1976 season, having played 12 years in the NFL. Russell was not only a great player, but also a great person. He was involved in many charitable and community activities, such as founding the Andy Russell Charitable Foundation, which supports children's health and education. He also wrote several books about his football experiences and his life philosophy. He was respected and admired by his teammates, coaches, fans, and opponents. He was inducted into the Pittsburgh Steelers Hall of Honor and the Pittsburgh Pro Football Hall of Fame. He is considered one of the best linebackers in NFL history and a key figure in the Steelers' dynasty. Russell passed away on March 1, 2024, at the age of 82. He is survived by his wife, Cindy, and his four children. He will be remembered as a champion, a leader, and a gentleman. Number 2. David Bordwell David Bordwell was one of the most influential film scholars of our time. David Bordwell was born on July 23, 1947, in Penyan, New York. He developed a passion for cinema at an early age and pursued his academic studies in film at the University of Iowa, where he earned his PhD in 1974. He then joined the faculty of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he taught for 30 years until his retirement in 2004. He was the Jack LaDuis Professor Emeritus of Film Studies and mentored many prominent film theorists and critics. Bordwell wrote, co-authored or edited more than 20 books and hundreds of articles on various aspects of film theory, history and style. He was known for his rigorous and innovative approach to film analysis, drawing from diverse sources such as Russian formalism, cognitive psychology and historical poetics. Some of his most famous works include Film Art and Introduction, co-written with his wife and fellow film scholar Kristin Thompson, which is one of the most widely used textbooks in film courses around the world, the classical Hollywood cinema film style and mode of production to 1960, co-written with Thompson and Janet Steiger, which is a landmark study of the evolution of Hollywood filmmaking and narration in the fiction film, which is a groundbreaking exploration of how films tell stories. Bordwell also contributed to the Criterion Collection and the Criterion Channel, producing commentaries, essays, and interviews for many films in their catalog. He also maintained a blog with Thompson called Observations on Film Art, where he shared his insights and enthusiasm for cinema with film lovers everywhere. Bordwell was admired and respected by his peers, students, and fans for his vast knowledge, clear writing, and generous spirit. He was described by Oscar-winning director Damien Chazelle as America's Andre Bazin, a thinker and historian who massively expanded the field 
and found a way to marry theory and criticism in a wholly new way. Bordwell passed away on February 29, 2024, at the age of 76, after a long illness. He is survived by his wife, Christine Thompson, and his legacy lives on in his books, articles, videos, and blog. He was a giant of film scholarship and a tireless champion of cinema. Number 3. Ruth Hennig, Baroness Hennig. Ruth Hennig was a British historian and politician who made significant contributions to the fields of international history and security regulation. She passed away on 29 February 2024 at the age of 80. Ruth Hennig was born in Leicester in 1943 to Jewish refugees who fled from Nazi-occupied Europe. She had a passion for history and education and graduated from the University of London with a BA in History in 1965. She later obtained a PhD in History from Lancaster University in 1978, where she became a lecturer and Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. Ruth Hennig was also active in politics, as a member of the Labour Party. She served as a councillor in Lancashire County Council from 1981 to 2005 and as the chair of Lancashire Police Authority from 1995 to 2005. She was also the chair and president of the Association of Police Authorities and a member of the National Criminal Justice Board. In 2004, Ruth Hennig was appointed as a life peer in the House of Lords with the title of Baroness Hennig of Lancaster she became a Deputy Speaker of the House of Lords in 2018 and was involved in various committees and debates on security, foreign affairs, and human rights. Ruth Hennig was also a prolific author who wrote several books and pamphlets on 20th century international history, such as The Origins of the First World War, The League of Nations, and The Peace That Never Was. She was an expert on the interwar period and the role of diplomacy and international organizations in preventing and resolving conflicts. Ruth Hennig was a remarkable woman who dedicated her life to public service, academic excellence, and social justice. She was respected and admired by her colleagues, students, and peers, and received many awards and honors for her work. She was a role model and inspiration for many people, especially women, in the fields of history and politics. Number 4. Iris Apfel Iris Apfel, a fashion icon and interior designer passed away at the age of 102 on March 1, 2024. Iris Apfel was born in New York City on August 29, 1921. She had a passion for art and design since she was a child, and she studied art history at New York University and art school at the University of Wisconsin. She worked as a copywriter for Women's Wear Daily and as an assistant to illustrator Robert Goodman. In 1948, she married Carl Apfel, and two years later they founded Old World Weavers, a textile company that specialized in reproducing fabrics from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. They traveled the world in search of rare and beautiful textiles, and they worked on restoration projects at the White House for nine presidents from Truman to Clinton. They also had celebrity clients such as Greta Garbo and Estee Lauder. Iris Apple had a unique and eccentric style that mixed high and low fashion, vintage and modern, and colorful and bold accessories. She wore oversized glasses, bright lipstick, and layers of jewelry. She once said, I'm not pretty, and I'll never be pretty, but it doesn't matter. I have something much better. I have style. She became famous in 2005 when the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute hosted an exhibition of her personal collection of clothes and accessories called Rara Avis, which means rare bird. She was the first person who was not a fashion designer to have such a show at the Met. She also starred in a documentary film called Iris, directed by Albert Mazels, in 2014. Iris Apfel never retired and she continued to collaborate with many brands and designers, such as HM, Kate Spade, and MAC Cosmetics. She also became a social media star, with millions of followers on Instagram and TikTok, where she shared her wisdom and humor. She called herself the world's oldest living teenager. 
Iris Apfel was an inspiration to many people who admired her creativity, originality, and courage. She showed us that fashion is not about following trends, but about expressing yourself and having fun. She also taught us to be curious, adventurous, and open-minded. She said, you have to be interested. If you're not interested, you can't be interesting. Number 5. Paul Vachon Paul Vachon, also known as Butcher Vachon, is a member of the famous Vachon wrestling family. Paul Vachon was born on October 7, 1937, in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He was one of 13 children of Ferdinand Vachon, a Montreal police officer. He followed his brother Maurice, better known as Mad Dog Vachon, into the wrestling business in 1957. He adopted his brother's vicious heel style and the moniker Butcher Vachon, Paul Vacon wrestled in various promotions, such as the American Wrestling Association, the World Wrestling Federation, the National Wrestling Alliance, and Georgia Championship Wrestling. He often teamed with his brother Mad Dog, and they won the Obawa World Tag Team Championship together. He also wrestled under a mask as Spoiler 2 in Jim Crockett promotions. Paul Vacon was not only a wrestler, but also a promoter. He and his brother Mad Dog founded Grand Prix Wrestling in Quebec, where they featured many local and international talents. He also appeared in the movie Wrestling Queen, alongside his sister Vivian Vacon, another wrestler. Paul Vachon retired from wrestling in 1985. He had a memorable appearance on Tuesday Night Titans, where he sang La Vie en Rose. He was also the adoptive father of Luna Vacon, a female wrestler who married Gangrel and Tom Nash. He had six children in total and was married four times. Paul Vachon faced many health challenges in his later years. He was diagnosed with colon cancer in 1993 and had half of his colon removed. He was diagnosed with throat cancer in 2003 and underwent 40 treatments. He also had his teeth removed and underwent reconstructive jaw surgery. He suffered from diabetes as well. Paul Vacon passed away on February 29, 2024, at the age of 86. He was inducted into the George Tragos Luthesh Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2010. He was a legend in the wrestling world and a friend to many. He will be missed and remembered by his fans and peers. Number 6. Vladimir Yedilov Vladimir Yedilov was a Russian politician who served in the Federation Council, the upper house of the Russian parliament from 2013 to 2015. Vladimir Yedilov was born on June 18, 1954, in the city of Penza, in the Soviet Union. He began his career in 1972 as an assembly fitter in an electronic computer plant. He graduated from Penza Factory Technical College in 1978 as a mechanical engineer. He then joined the Komsomol, the Communist Youth Organization, and worked in the regional committee for seven years. He also became involved in politics and law enforcement, serving as a police colonel and the head of the state road traffic safety inspection in the Penza region. He retired from the police in 2009 and became a deputy of the Legislative Assembly of the Penza region. He was also the chairman of the committee on monitoring the reliability of information on income, property and liabilities of public officials. In 2013, he was delegated to the Federation Council by the executive body of the Penza region. He was a member of the Federation Council Committee on Constitutional Legislation, Legal and Judicial Issues, and the Development of Civil Society. He was known for his support of the annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014 and his opposition to the sanctions imposed by the West on Russia. He also advocated for the protection of the rights and interests of Russian citizens abroad. He resigned from the Federation Council in 2015 and became the head of the administration of the Sosnovoborsky district in the Penza region. He was re-elected to this position in 2018. Vladimir Radlov was married to Olga Nikolaevna and had two children, Natalia and Georgi. His son died in 2013. He was a member of the United Russia Party, the ruling party in Russia. He died on March 1, 2024, at the age of 69. Vladimir Yedilov was a prominent figure in the regional and federal politics of Russia. He was a loyal supporter of President Vladimir Putin and his policies. 
He was also a respected leader in his community and a devoted family man. He left behind a legacy of service and dedication to his country and his people. Number 7. Erling Folkford. Erling Folkford was a Norwegian politician and activist. Erling Folkford was born on June 15, 1949, in Levanger, Norway. He studied social work at the Social School of Trondheim and became a social worker in Oslo, where he worked with drug addicts and homeless people. He was also a leader of the National Social Agencies Union from 1976 to 1978. Folkford joined the Workers' Communist Party AKP in the 1970s and became one of its leading members. He was also a founding member of the Red Electoral Alliance RV, a coalition of left-wing parties and groups that challenged the mainstream political parties. He was elected to the Oslo City Council in 1983 and served there for 19 years, becoming known as a corruption fighter and a watchdog of the public interest. In 1993, Folkford made history by becoming the first and only member of parliament for the RV and the first socialist to the left of the Socialist Left Party and the Labour Party since 1961. He was a vocal critic of the government's policies on social welfare, taxation, immigration and foreign affairs. He also advocated for human rights, environmental protection and peace. Folkford lost his seat in parliament in 1997 but continued to be active in politics. He was a deputy leader of the AKP until 1997 and a deputy leader of the RV until 2001. In 2007, the RV merged with other left-wing groups to form the Red Party, and Folkford became one of its prominent figures. He ran for parliament several times, but was not elected. He remained a member of the Oslo City Council until his death. Folkford was also involved in various social movements and causes. He was a leader of the Organization Against Political Surveillance, which exposed the illegal spying activities of the Norwegian secret police. He was a supporter of the Kurdish people's struggle for self-determination and democracy and visited the autonomous region of Rojava in Syria. He wrote several books and articles on topics such as corruption, capitalism, and socialism. Unfortunately, Erling Folkford passed away on March 1, 2024, at the age of 74. Erling Folkford was a passionate and principled politician who dedicated his life to fighting for a more just and egalitarian society. He was respected and admired by many, even by those who disagreed with him. He died in Stockholm, Sweden, while attending a conference on the Kurdish issue. He is survived by his daughter, Jorun Folkford, who is also a politician and activist. As we bid farewell to today's segment, Let's carry forward the enduring spirits of these extraordinary individuals. Their contributions have left an indelible mark on the world, reminding us to embrace life with passion and purpose. Remember to keep the flame alive by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Together, let's continue celebrating the lives of those who've made a difference. Until next time, stay immortal and keep spreading love and kindness wherever you go.